Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome back. Today, we will look at another game by Nakamura, in which we're going to learn the importance of quick development, and we will learn how to become really good at attacking chess. And we will look at a game which Nakamura <clears throat> played a while ago, about 20 years ago, in a Blitz game against someone by the last name Goldsby. So, let me put this into the chess, <coughs> and let's take a look. The game <coughs> begins with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, and we got the queen's gambit declined, knight c3, nothing special, and black plays c6. This structure is called the semislav. Um, very, very, very popular opening on the highest level. <clears throat> One of the ideas for black is to take this pawn and then defend that pawn with b5. Which is why one of white's main move, which Nakamura plays, is pawn e3. It does lock this bishop in, but it does make sure that after takes, white can take back with the bishop. Okay, black played knight d7. We're still in the main line of the semislav. And now white has two main moves. White can play queen c2. The point of queen c2 is white does not want to touch this bishop yet because once white touches this bishop, black will take <coughs> and white will end up moving the bishop twice. So white would rather do something else first so that he can capture in one move. But Nakamura plays bishop d3, which is the other main move. Of course, black now takes on c4. Of course, Nakamura takes back. But now he ends up spending two moves to get here. Another thing, now that there is a bishop on c4, black can gain time with b5. And the plan for black is to eventually play a6, bishop b7, and c5 to challenge the white center. <clears throat> Nakamura can drop to several different spots. He decides to drop to d3 because if black castles, this is a very good bishop. <clears throat> black plays a6, the point of a6. At some point, black needs to play c5, but once he plays c5, this pawn is free, so black defends it with a pawn. Nakamura castles, nothing special. Black plays c5, <coughs> challenging the center. Nakamura plays e4, which is a risky move. Nakamura is fighting for the center. He opens the door for his bishop. Computer is not a fan, but the reason computer is not a fan, if black plays this very precisely, black is going to be a little bit better, but black has to be careful. The difference is white has a number of different moves, all of which are somewhat fine, and black more or less has to follow one or two lines, if he doesn't follow those lines, he will get in trouble. Black follows those lines so far. He takes on d4. Nakamura takes back. He now has a nice knight. Black keeps playing good moves. He improves his bishop. <coughs> this is a nice bishop on b7. Nakamura plays queen e2. Uh, supports this pawn, but also allows for this rook to come and sit across from the queen. Black plays bishop c5, which is okay. Uh, computer slightly prefers bishop d6. Um, but bishop c5 develops the bishop with tempo, attacks the knight. Nakamura drops the knight to a safe spot, knight f3. And here again, if you notice the two main moves, according to Stockfish, a queen b8, with the idea to get on this diagonal and get away from this line. And bishop d6 because the bishop makes more sense over here. And both of them are not very natural moves, especially considering that you just played that move. Um, <clears throat> black played the human move, but all of a sudden, black is not better anymore. 
The reason for Black's move is he was afraid of bishop g5 and pawn e5 ideas. <clears throat> Nakamura plays rook d1, which again is a very human move, computer does not like it. The point <clears throat> of rook d1 <clears throat> is get your queen, is get the rook opposite of the queen. Uh, Nakamura missed an idea of knight g4, which is very annoying, double attacking this, which would force our rook to come back to f1, and we effectively end up wasting two moves. <coughs> we don't really want to play a move like bishop e3, because black will take, we would take back, now we have two terrible pawns, this pawn is weak, um, black can attack it twice, we don't really want to play king f2, and black is sort of in control, and we are just defending. So, it was a mistake by Nakamura, but black did not punish it, which, again, A, it's a blitz game, so it's not going to be perfect, but B, this is an important point, that you should always look at forcing moves, checks, captures, and threats. Uh, black plays a different move, which attacks the spawn, queen b6, uh, but Nakamura decides to ignore it, because, again, he would be afraid of the knight. He's not afraid of these two guys, because he has two defenders. And he plays e5, <clears throat> which forces this knight to decide where to go. Again, knight g4 would be an interesting option, but then we can play knight e4. <coughs> Defending the spawn, centralizing the knight. In the game, black centralize the knight or a different spot, knight e5, knight e4 anyway, we now have a very nice knight, notice we don't want to trade, uh, trade is okay, but it doesn't help us, black just stays with the bishop, he has a very nice bishop, and we don't really have anything absolutely amazing, which is why Nakamura, in order to try to attack, he centralizes his knight. There could be a world where this knight might go here. There could be a world where he's looking at this square. And black decides that he does not want to allow this trade. So he drops the bishop back. Which makes sense because he wants <coughs> to preserve the two bishops. Nakamura tries to cause a little bit of trouble here. The point is if black takes... If black takes the pawn, we take back, we sort of put in pressure on a6, and our rook is better than the black rook. Also, we triple attack in the spawn, so black decides to play pawn b4, um, which keeps this line closed. Nakamura plays pawn a5, attacking the queen. Also, now, this pawn is fixed on the light square, which means... It will be a weakness for a long time. Black saves his queen, queen a7. And Nakamura plays a very interesting move. It might not be the best move, but it's a very interesting practical move. He plays knight d6. <coughs> um, okay, it's a very nice knight, so black needs to take it, which he does. Nakamura takes back. Um, and the thing about this pawn is it's very hard for white to defend it. This pawn is more of a weakness than a strength. Uh, so black immediately decides to go and try to pick it up. Um, computer wants Nakamura to play knight d2 with the ideas of bringing the knight to one of these squares. Or something like knight, b knight e5. Nakamura plays knight d4 for a very specific reason. He sees the spin. Obviously, if black does nothing, we will sacrifice the knight and invade with the queen. Uh, but the other point is, if black does something, we can play knight f5, which is what happened in the game. Queen took, knight f5. And again, this position is a good demonstration of the th how the thinking of stockfish differs from the thinking of human beings. Stockfish can hold this. But on, only if Stockfish finds queen e5, uh, which tries to trade queens. After the queen trade, <coughs> black is absolutely okay. Um, the problem is humans 
are not as good at finding those only moves in difficult positions. Black found a different move. Black saw that his queen attacked and his pawn being attacked. So he played queen f8, which defends the pawn and saves the queen. The problem with that move is now black is not castling this way, the queen is passive, the rook is not playing chess, and now this will be a very instructive example of how we can launch a quick attack um, from, from the position where it's seemingly we don't have very much. So first, Nakamura plays bishop c4, um, he improves his bishop, he opens his rook, notice the spin over here. <coughs> so Nakamura is simply threatening to take twice, because black pawn cannot take, black pawn cannot take back. So black plays knight f6, providing another defender to this knight. And Nakamura brings out another piece, bishop f4. Also now we have ideas of knight d6 fork. Uh, black still cannot take our knight. And another point of bishop f4 is now we can bring our last piece. Again, black, this queen is still very passive. This king is stuck in the middle. Now, it looks like black can take this bishop, which is why Nakamura's <coughs> move is so amazing. But Nakamura realized that if black takes this bishop, it opens the line for this rook. And this is a very, very, very high level move. And just to demonstrate what would happen if knight takes, we have another brilliant move, bishop b5. The point being is the king cannot go down because of the knight. The king cannot move sideways because of the rook. So black has one move knight here. He can also take, but that just leads to a very quick checkmate. Um, so the only move is knight blocks. Of course, we just take this knight. Again, black has the only move king d8. And now we take the spawn, open up the rook. <coughs> and the problem for black, again, um, what do you do? If you go here, you walk into the queen. So let's say king e8. We can, we can do another check, uh, force the king to go here. We can do another check and go, and go after this, and go after this bishop, for example. <coughs> and again, this king is suffering tremendously. Black rook is out of the game. The queen is very passive. It cannot block because we have this amazing knight. Um, so this is just devastating. Um, um, so black didn't take, but he has a problem. Um, we are threatening this. It's not easy to deal with this. Um, okay, let's pretend bishop c6 so that you don't get forked. Well, let's let's see. <clears throat> the problem is this queen might actually get harassed right now. When you play bishop d6, attacking the queen, if the queen moves, if the queen moves, we continue our onslaught. We can play knight d4, which attacks the bishop. This pawn is still being double attacked. There are ideas of sacrificing over here. Well, and let's say bishop b7. Once again, we have bishop b5. <coughs> and again, this is not going to end well for the black king. In the game, black played g6, attacking the knight. But of course, we get our fork. The king has to move. We get our bishop, um, king c6, and Nakamura picks up another pawn. Now we up a lot of material, and black resigned. So the key moment in this game was a couple of moves back, where after knight f5, black played the very natural move queen f8. Um, the important point is there are things which are more important than material. Black is up a pawn. But black queen is bad, his king is in the middle, white pieces can become active, black pieces cannot. These two guys are not being very useful. It took Nakamura just five moves to convert this position into 
resigna into a resignation by Black. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not a very nice game by Nakamura. Um, please like, please subscribe, and I will be back soon. Thank you.